What's up, ACCA students? Steve Willis here. In this video, I'm going to help you get a pass on your upcoming performance management exam. I'll demystify the topics of the market size and the market share variances, and I'll do that in the context of the past exam question spike. So without further ado, let's get started. Team, I've got the past exam question spike here on the screen. It's from 2007. It's an oldie, but it's still quite relevant as the market size and market share variances are very much in the syllabus. We're going to jump down to part C and D here. So I recommend you try this on your own. Pause the video here. You can download the PDF at the link right in the upper right of your screen. So give this a try in the spreadsheet tool. And when you're done, continue watching the video. Welcome back. I'm in the practice platform now, and I've opened up a blank spreadsheet. With this, I can simulate the real PM exam experience. I'm going to start by labeling my work. We always want to help the marker find what they're looking for. So we're doing part C here. Let's start with the sales price variance. This variance tells us why actual profit is different from budgeted profit because of a change in the selling price. Each variance will only reflect a change in one variable. And here we're looking at the impact of selling at a price different from budget. Let's now calculate that sales price variance and review what it's all about. If we're looking at our budget and we want to control performance, if we want to understand why the actual results are different from the budget, we can look at our, our sales revenue from three perspectives. We can start with the original budget. We can then look at the flexed budget. Then we can look at the actual results. And we are talking about sales. So the original budgeted sales would be equal to the 180,000 units multiplied by the budgeted or the standard selling price of 17, taken right from the question. Now, the actual results, we actually sold 176 units, so we sold fewer units than expected. That is bad news. And we're going to multiply that by the actual price to get the actual revenue. And that would be 16.4. So we have two things went badly. One, we sold fewer units. Two, we sold at a lower selling price. And we would like to isolate the impact of that different selling price on profit. We want to ignore the impact of the units at this point. So we're going to calculate the flexed sales. And we're going to take the actual units that we sold, 176, and I'm going to multiply that by the standard or the budgeted price. Now, the sales price variance, we're going to go from flexed to actual, because we want to ask the question, when we sell 176 units, we should get 2992 in revenue, but we did get 2886.4. So for the sales price variance, I don't need that original budgeted sales right now. We're only going flexed to actual. We know we sold at a lower price, so I will now label that variance as adverse. And that variance will be the difference between the flexed and the actual. And just to make sure it's crystal clear, 
Let's label our work one final time. Let's tell the marking team we're working in some dollars, round it off to the thousand. I like to put an apostrophe there just like I do in Excel when I'm trying to show text. So friends, there we have it, the sales price variance. Don't worry, there are no marks for spelling or formatting. If the marking team understands what you're doing, and if they can follow your work, you'll get the credit. One thing I'll do though, I will be neat, I will be professional. Let me just round this all off consistently. I'm not gonna get a mark for that, but I like to be neat and professional. There we have it. Guys, moving on to the sales volume variance. Here, I only care about the impact on profit of selling fewer units. So I'm going to work here with budgeted contribution. Then we could go to flexed contribution. And we could put an actual contribution here. In theory, we could. We don't even have that information in, the, in this question. Now, budgeted contribution is 180 units, 180,000 units, multiplied by the $7 per unit. The flexed contribution is going to be equal to the 176 units. The only thing that changes is the units, multiplied by the 7. We want to keep that same standard or budgeted contribution per unit. And we're not going to the actual this time. Let's get rid of that. We only need budgeted contribution and flexed contribution. Now I know some of you are asking, it's a sales variance. Why are we doing contribution? Think about this. If we sell fewer units, that's a bad thing. We have lower revenue. But if we sell fewer units, we have lower variable costs. That's a good thing. So the net impact of selling fewer units than budgeted is the contribution line. Guys, that is why the sales volume variance looks at contribution and not the sales line. One more time, if we only looked at the sales line, there, we're ignoring the impact of lower variable costs. So the impact on profit of selling fewer units is lower revenue and lower variable costs, so lower contribution, the net. So the impact of selling fewer units is going to be adverse, right? Right there, label the work. and. The difference, again, between those two numbers is the result I'm looking for. Team, there you have it, part C, sales price, sales volume variance. Moving on to part D, market size and market share variances. First thing that I'm going to do is go upstairs and grab some of the work that I've already done. I'm going to grab the budgeted contribution and the flexed contribution. Now I'm going to park the flexed contribution. I'm going to park it four rows down. And if I come over here, several columns, we can restate that adverse sales volume variance. And we said that was equal to budgeted contribution minus the flexed. I would like to understand why that number is adverse. What is the cause of this? And to do that, let's drill down into that number and see if the cause is a decline in the market size or a decline in the demand for our products 
or did we sell fewer units than expected in this declining market? In order to do that, I am going to revise the budget. And in the story, we learned that the total market size dropped. Demand fell for leather-bound diaries. Makes sense. People are keeping more notes on their smartphones. So we will do a revised budget here. And we'll express that in percentage terms. The actual demand in the period was 1.6. Our forecast demand was 1.8. So the planning department had an error in their work. We were 89% off. We were 11% we were off in our forecast of demand. So if we multiply that revised percentage by the budgeted contribution, now we have a revised budgeted, let's, re, let's be very clear here, revised budgeted contribution. Now that we have the revised budgeted contribution in place, I would like to understand what was the impact of the demand dropping. And it's the market size variance that isolates that planning error. So that's going to be equal to the budgeted contribution minus the revised budget. And we get a 140 there. That's the adverse market size variance. That tells us profit is 140,000 lower because demand, overall demand for the product has dropped. Now, if we want to look at the actions of the sales manager, we could then compare the flexed contribution against the revised budget. The revised budget would be a fairer target, wouldn't it? So I will now subtract. This time I'm grabbing the bottom one and comparing it to the middle one just so I get a positive number there. And that is the market share variance. That tells us in our declining market, demand is dropping. We sold more mark units than expected in this declining market, and we actually grew our market share. So that's a favorable market share variance. Friends, there we have it, a breakdown of the sales volume variance into the market size and the market share components. It tells us that the overall demand for our product is dropping. People are moving to smartphones from leather-bound diaries. It tells us that in a declining market, we actually did better than expected and we gained market share. But the net impact of all of that is still a 28 adverse. Friends, there you have it. The market size and the market share variances I hope this video helped. If it did, feel free, feel free to throw down a like and tell your friends. If you've got any questions, please add them in the comments below. And guys, I want to wish you good luck on your upcoming PM exam.